Hi everyone, Andrew Carruthers here, Education Director for Sam Via. In the future, I believe we'll probably be producing something more along the lines of a full-length DVD or a classroom that you can look at on our website on texturizing. Until that time, I want to introduce you to, th to three of my really important pieces that I think will more greatly affect your texture than anything else. One of them is going to be the tools you choose. Second one is going to be what kinds of sections you choose. And then the third one's going to be how you approach the hair. Do you start from the interior and work out, or do you start from the exterior and work in? So let's talk about tools real quick. You have a lot of options in tools to create texture in hair. You could use the seven inch dry cutting scissor. Could you use the five and three quarter inch wet cutting scissor? Absolutely, of course you could. The difference is going to be how deeply into the hair strand you can go in because of the overall length of this, the scissor blade. Another option would be to be using the reversible blending shear. There's a lot of different techniques you can use with this blending shear. You can use it for very soft texturizing, or you can get very, very aggressive with it. We've designed it in a way that you get to make the choice. You get to be as aggressive as you want or as soft as you want with our blending shear. Third option is the razor. Now, a lot of people get very fearful of the razor. And a lot of times, it's because we're not using it properly. The razor wasn't necessarily designed to just be this tool where we go in and shred hair to pieces. It was designed to be a tool that we still use with precision and technique behind it. So don't be so afraid to pick up your razor. And all it is is an instrument to remove the hair not necessarily a tool that you should be afraid of. So each of those instruments can be used in a lot of different ways. Now, let's go to the types of sections that we can use. We can use a vertical section, of course. We can use a horizontal section. Or we could use a diagonal back or a diagonal forward section. The principles that go into fun fundamental hairdressing the same ones that you use when you cut a bob or cut any other shape go into your texturizing, too. If we choose a more vertical section, what's the difference with a vertical section? It takes more weight out, usually, and it tends to be a little bit softer of a section. If we choose a horizontal section, what's different? Now we're actually keeping more weight, more strength, more density to the hair. Same thing's true with your texturizing. Diagonals. It's in between a vertical and a horizontal, right? So what do you guess is different? It's going to be in between the effect of a horizontal and a vertical section. So vertical section. If I take a vertical section and I bring this out, and let's say I come in and I create some really deep texture in here, some really short points leave really long points, short points, long points, kind of something like this, peaks and valleys. As that hair falls, where do the valleys go? They go underneath longer pieces of hair. So is it going to give you strong visual texture? Not necessarily. What those peaks and valleys would do inside of that is give this hair expansion and lightness and airiness, but it's not necessarily going to be extreme visual texture. Now let's go to more of a horizontal section. If I take a horizontal section and I do that same thing, I create some really strong peaks, some really shallow valleys. Again, a strong peak, shallow valley. Now I've got this going this way. As I release, see how those peaks and valleys are going to lay across the head shape? Now I'm going to create really intense visual texture. I'm actually going to see those long pieces, short pieces, long pieces, short pieces. You see the difference there. So now, Andrew, what happens with a diagonal section? A lot of it's going to depend on the direction you go. If I take a diagonal back section, guess which direction you're going to see the texture flow? Towards the back of the head, right? Same thing that happens if you take a diagonal back section when you're cutting hair. It's going to influence the hair to travel towards the back of the head. If I take a diagonal forward, exact opposite is true. If I give it visual texture, that visual texture is going to be falling forward and moving towards the face. Four really key differences in those different sectioning patterns. 
Now the final thing that's really gonna make a big difference is how do you approach the hair? Do you come from the outside in or the inside out? Let me clarify what I mean by that. By outside in, I mean that you would be using a technique, something along the line of point cutting, where you're coming in this direction. You're coming from the outside of the hair inward. If I approach the hair this direction, the focus is going to be on the ends. The focus is going to be texture on the ends. The other thing that's probably going to happen is you're going to see more of your overall length reduced if you're coming from the outside in. If I go the opposite way, let's say with like a traditional slicing technique, I'm going to come from the inside outward. So by coming from the inside out, usually the effect I'm going to get is less reduction of the overall length on the perimeter of it and more weight reduction on the internal portion of, of the haircut. So those are two really distinct differ differences. Do I want texture through the ends and maybe a little bit of reduction of length? Or do I want to leave the outside length intact and focus more on internal texture? So those are our really, really key differences on those, those processes we go through as we texturize. So again, focus on your tools, choose your tools wisely. Straight scissors is gonna give you a lot more of a specific line. If I use a razor or a blending shear, I'm gonna soften those lines more. Make sure you're making a conscious decision on whether you're going horizontal, vertical, or diagonal based on those principles I just barely taught you. And then, final step is decide, do I approach this from going inside out or the outside in? You put those three principles into your practice each day, guys, I promise you, you're gonna have so much more control over the texture. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Andrew Carruthers, Education Director for Sambia.